Welcome, everybody. My name is Joe Noriel, president of the Pelham Museum. It's Peyton, my daughter. She won't be really doing anything. That's looking cute. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I'm almost speechless tonight. I mean, we, we get so many amazing performance uh, coming through our doors, but uh, this, is, this is certainly one that that uh, just literally has my head spinning. Uh, you know, when we put on this particular exhibit, uh, which is Smithsonian exhibit, Native Words, Native Warriors, honoring the code talkers of World War II, uh, we know we had a very important message to tell, and, and certainly their service was, was unsurpassed. And we felt like this particular exhibit certainly needed a, a cultural performance, and, and boy, we couldn't have found a better, better person to, to, uh, to present tonight. Uh, Mr. Tony Redhouse, he's literally spent his whole life, he's a healer, just saving people, helping people. Uh, his father, a uh, Native American, Navajo, was also a traditional medicine man, so he taught Tony at a very young age, uh, you know, a very important craft. So, so Petaluma is extremely proud to have him here today, and with that, we have a very special, ta special presentation for Tony, and I'd like to introduce our uh, Vice Mayor, uh, Tiffany Renee. Um, we're very excited to have Mr. Redhouse here. Our uh, mayor couldn't be here this evening, and I left the chance to be able to fill in his place. Um, this is a proclamation, proclamation from the city of Petaluma. Whereas the residents of uh, Petaluma recognize Tony Redhouse's many accomplishments, contributions, and sacrifices he has made in his life, and whereas through Mr. Redhouse's unique abilities and an in, as an inspirational leader, spiritual teacher and a hoop dancer. He has helped bridge the gap between cultures, social groups, races, and ages. And whereas we recognize Tony Redhouse, a Navajo, for teaching Native American craft and cultural programs in schools, and whereas Tony Redhouse, a Grammy-nominated musician and winner of a Native American Music Award, has enriched many lives through his music, and whereas Mr. Redhouse is to be commended in using his music to inspire souls in recovery from addiction, trauma, cancer, grief, and more. And whereas the city of Petaluma wishes to honor Tony Redhouse for his contributions in sharing the Native American culture with our citizens, now therefore be it resolved that I, David Glass, Mayor of Petaluma, along with the members of the City Council, do hereby proclaim Friday, May 25th, 2012, as Tony Redhouse Day in the city of Petaluma. Thank uh -huh. 
do something and they have a gift and they have a talent, they compete. <laughs> so they started to compete. Went up the mountain, I met the mountain, herding the sheep. And as he was going up the mountain, the winner was whoever came to the top of the mountain and didn't run out of songs. <laughs> Center yesterday presenting a retreat for ions and they had me come out also they found out I was coming out to the Bay Area and they they wanted me to do a retreat and uh, in the process of that I came out on Thursday and they had me filming they were filming me for an uh, interview they were filming filming me in my perspective my spiritual perspective to be included in Deepak Chopra's uh, documentary on death and the beginning of life so, how many wonderful things just start coming along and blossoming in your path as you begin being true to yourself? And uh, what I teach is about intuition, going back to simplicity. How nice it is to go back to simple, simple heartbeat, isn't it? All the complications, all the technology. Everything that we've been through, all the relationships, all the drama, everything that we've been through, and to go back to that simple heartbeat. And uh, it's beautiful to be able to, to find our truth to something as simple as a heartbeat. And so I'm a recording artist, and I'm also a dancer. And I've been on stage since I was six years old. 
I was forced to be on stage. My dad wanted me to represent Native American culture in Monterey Bay in an auditorium for an international kids pageant. So I was a Native American representation. That was my first time on stage. And little did I know that I was looking into my destiny for the rest of my life. When I was standing on stage in front of that audience, I was dressed in regalia that my family had made me. And I had a drum in my hand. And I was looking out at the audience. And I have found myself doing that so many times now. And it became my destiny. My mom said that I tried to hide that day in the house so I wouldn't have to do it. Because I was afraid. I was a shy little boy. But sometimes the spirit places us in our destiny without our knowing it. And many times we go back to that place that we experienced, that we encountered at the very start of our life. And many times we go back to that, we live a whole life and we, we follow different careers and we try to find out who we are and we search for ourselves for years. Some of us even try to escape from ourselves for years. And then we come back to that very beginning. And so that's what I did. I came back, I started going back to that very beginning. And so one thing that I've learned in making my drums is that you uh, are able to create a heartbeat. And many times that heartbeat, when you feel the vibration, reminds you of mama. Reminds you of being in the womb. Reminds you of that essence. When every cell in your body, every vital organ, every dream, every fear, every thought, back to this heartbeat. It's able to heal us. It's able to bring us back to a very simple, beautiful essence of who we really are before we began this journey on this earth. You know, I used this drum on my father when he was in a coma seven years ago. I was rushing down from Phoenix to get down to Tucson to see my father because he went into a coma. He had a fall. My mom and dad had been married 56 years. And you know, when I left Phoenix, I took my drum and I took my two eagle feathers. And I was on a mission. Because my mom and dad had been together 56 years and I wanted my dad to be healed. So I took my drum and I rushed down to the ICU in Tucson, Arizona, St. Joseph's Hospital. And I took my drum and my two feathers and I hesitated in the parking lot. You know how we do that sometimes when we're really feeling our intuition that we should do something or we should say something or we should we should maybe do something with somebody and yet we hesitate out of fear of judgment, fear of being ridiculed. And so I hesitated because I thought what my family they're gonna think I'm they're gonna think I'm trying to be super spiritual or you know some kind of a medicine person or something, you know? walking into this into this ICU room and I asked my family to leave and I asked the nurses to leave and I took my drum my dad was laying there in a coma like this with his hands open like this with his mouth open and I took the drum and I went over his body and I prayed over him I went from head to toe with a heartbeat and I prayed over him for him to come out of the coma, right? I really wanted him to. So did my mom. And as I was doing this, and I prayed over him from head to toe with the vibration of my drum, I hit the last beat, and my dad went into a convulsion. He went like this. And I had an eagle feather, in each hand. And he, when he went into that convulsion, he grabbed the eagle feather in his right hand and he let go. And I had my family bury him with that eagle feather across the start. So I did what I was supposed to do. It wasn't what I thought was going to happen. But I did what I was supposed to do and he showed me. He affirmed that, I, that what I did was right. He was able to let go. And so, the instruments that I use 
the drum, the voice, and the flute are the ancient forms of expression that we use to create a sacred space. You know, we go into a ceremony, you're going to hear that drum, you're going to hear that voice. And so these ancient forms of expression take us back to the very simple, to the ancient, before there were words, before there was a language. All indigenous people across the universe had the voice, the drum, and the flute. And that's the way that they spoke, that's the way that they expressed their soul. And so we go back to this simple expression that takes us back to our beginning. Before there was a language, before there were terms to try to describe what color something was or how we felt, we simply used our voice, we used the drum, and we used the flute. When I go into the hospice, I walk down the halls and I use the drum. Not like, not dressed like this. <laughs> just use a simple heartbeat and the people laying there in their rooms they wake up sometimes you know you kind of come in and go out you know they look at they look at me they look at me when I'm playing the flute they're looking and sometimes they go back in and when I'm using the heartbeat drum it's very comforting to them it's also very comforting to create that safe peaceful place for the families to let go right and so this heartbeat just kind of relaxes everybody, goes throughout the air. I go down the hallways, sometimes I go into the rooms, and they request me to. And you know what? I don't need to say words. I don't even need to chant a chant. All I need to do is... Army. He was a sergeant, three stripes on his arm. Whenever he told us to do something, we didn't argue. <laughs> we didn't complain. We didn't rationalize. We didn't justify. We just said, yes, sir. <laughs> That's the way we were raised. All of us had buzz haircuts. <laughs> he had a habit of taking his, his electric razor and just sitting us down there, you know. And, uh, it's funny because when my dad retired, guess what he did? He was always honest about long hair, you know, telling us, you know, he didn't like it. What did he do when he retired from the civil service after 35 years? He grew his hair out. <laughs> so I'd like to just share a little bit of, of music with you, a little bit of meditation music. Actually, meditation is just a complicated word, right? There's so many books on it. There's so many techniques. All it means is going into yourself long enough to find out who you are, what you're feeling this moment right now. That's all it is. That's your truth right now. How you feel, what you're sensing, even your fears, your insecurities, what your hopes, your dreams are. Whatever you're feeling right now, that is your intuition, that is your truth. If you go beyond your mind, beyond all of the layers of consciousness, beyond all of the encounters and experiences in life, and you go back into here, into your gut. How many, you know, when you feel something in your gut, you know it's right on, right? When I go on that date, <laughs> you know, I've been divorced, when I go on that date, you know what? When I hear that voice on the phone, I can tell right here, okay? You can tell all the time. When you go to buy that house and you go into that neighborhood and you drive in there 
and you go in there and you feel out the neighborhood, you can tell right here, is this going to be a good move? If we follow our intuition, it'll be right on the target every time. Relationships, career, college courses, starting a family, everything. Starting a project, a business deal, signing a contract, <coughs> it's going to be right on every single time. So we always want to go to that intuition and that's what I'd like to share is for us really to empower ourselves to be able to just know that we know by what's in here. Not having to run to somebody, not having to go to somebody, not having to, to seek because it's all right inside of here. So I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey right now using some sound and uh, I want you just to flow with me during this time. Uh, and as I'm using simple sound, I want you just to feel. And just let your life respond to whatever I'm doing. Trust me on this, and I will guide you. And I want you to go within yourself. As you go within yourself, you will be able to come to your truth, and you'll be able to feel what you need to feel, what you need to know in this moment right now. In any situation, any decision you have to make right now that's hanging in the air, you know what? If you go inside of here, you will know exactly what to do in this moment. If you need healing right now, and you need your body to cooperate and for everything to come together, then your body will also come together and it will all be still and it will all unite. Okay? So this is also, I use my CD to help people in that way too. Uh, but I'd like you just to just take a moment right now. Just relax with me. And I'm going to use a little bit of sound. I'm going to take you on a little journey. And I'd love for you just to enjoy this time. You know, the wonderful thing about meditation like this, when I'm creating the music, is you don't need to do anything. Isn't it nice when you don't have to do anything? Huh? When you can just sit there and let go. You don't have to try. You don't have to try to be. You can simply can be content to be. Okay? So I want you just to relax. Let me do all the work. Let me just guide you. All you need to do is just flow with me. And you will be amazed what you feel. Okay? So I'm going to take you on a little journey and just relax. And now, what, as I do this, I want you to be completely aware of what you're feeling and what you're sensing. Because as you go within yourself, it's like diving into the ocean. Or it's like going down into a cave. The farther you go down, the more layers of consciousness are going to pass you along the way. So it's the same thing when you go inside of yourself, you're going to see things rise to the surface. Things that want to get attention, things that, that you're worried about, whatever it is. But sometimes you're even going to get things that are old memories that are going to come up, or colors, or images, or feelings that you never knew were in there, okay? And so I want you just to be aware, as I take you in, just to be aware of anything that rises to the surface. The beautiful thing about meditation and going inside of yourself is that once you go within, there's no room for anybody else. Okay? Your ex-husband, his problems can't go in there. Nobody else can fit in there. Just you. No one else's drama, no one else's problems, no one else's baggage. When you go inside of there, it's the only room for you. That's why it's so difficult sometimes, huh? To be alone with your thoughts, isn't it? Because you always want to do something or have somebody come over or, you know, because it's hard sometimes to be alone with your thoughts. When I work with drug addicts in Tucson, women that are meth, heroin, coke addicts, uh, alcohol addicts, you know what? I teach them this. I take them into meditation. I, I do some live music. And they have the chance to go inside of themselves. And you know what? They're not trained to, do, to meditate. You know, they're used to hustling and being out there and making things happen and getting money and, you know, coming out of prison or trying to get their kids back from CPS. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not used to just sitting still. Because you know what? When they sit still, guess what they're going to think about? Guess what they're going to think about? when they were sexually, sexually abused when they were a little girl, when they were being used on the streets. Those things that hurt, those, those dark shadows, it's difficult, it really is hard. And so 
Going inside of yourself is a beautiful tool for us to be able to heal ourselves. When I talk about death and, and opening up to new life, we don't have to die, okay? When I see the people in the hospice, and I see them at that door, and they're ready to leave, they are having to make resolution, or they're, or they're not going to be able to, or they're regretting that they never did make peace with that loved one, that they never have made up with somebody, that they have never closed that chapter, and they're going to be at that place, and they're going to wish that they had. We don't want to come to that place, okay? We want to be there right now. We have the opportunity. What I'm teaching is that meditation, your dreams, are tools that the Spirit is, is gracing us with so we don't have to wait till we're at the last moment and face all these things. We can work them out right now. When you go into meditation, you're going to, into a type of death. Okay? You're closing your eyes. Just close your eyes for a second. Just close them for a second. When you close your eyes, that's when you really open your eyes. That's when you can really see because you are not seeing with the visual, with the, with the physical eyes, you are not seeing what color something is, whether somebody looks homeless, whether this circumstance looks like this. You're not looking with the physical eyes. You're feeling from the inside. And that's the truth. Helen Keller, people like that, they knew things without using their physical eyes. And it's so we, when we close our eyes, that's when we really can begin working out things in our life. Okay, we can begin to see what the truth is in our relationships, in our conflicts. And so we want to be able to go there. In our dreams, in my dream life, I'm able to do this. I'm able to ask for a dream. Every night I put my journal on my bed next to me. I leave it open with a pen on it. And if I need an answer, guess what? I'm going to get a dream. And most of my dreams are always showing a pattern that I'm going through. The dynamics are always the same. The people, the faces, it doesn't matter what they are. But the, but the story is always the same. It's dealing with stuff in me that, that is unfinished, unresolved in relationships. And I'm going through that in my dreams. So it's a way for me to begin working out in my subconscious what I have not worked out in my conscious. So dreams and intuition are ways that we can die. You know, in a sense that we can start dying to our ego and things that are that are, are keeping things unclear and we can go to the center. Okay? So it's 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 a beautiful thing for us to do. So I'm gonna take you into a little meditation. Just relax with me. And let's just take a couple moments just to do this. and see what you feel. <laughs>
crystal sea that sparkles bright, bringing waves of healing over me.
speak to our senses, the smell of sage, you know? All of these things that speak to our senses have a way of, of triggering us to go back to that center, back to that core, back to that ceremony that we're, that we're in, okay? It reminds us. That's all it does. It simply reminds us. The Spirit is so gracious to us because the Spirit knows that we are human beings. We're completely human. What makes me spiritual is I embrace all of my human frailty, all of my human mortality. I don't pull any punches. Okay, I am who I am. I'm, a, I'm, I'm who I am up here. I am I'm who I, I'm, I am down, down there in the streets, tra traveling. The Spirit knows me very well. Intimately, it is an intimate relationship. It is a love relationship. With the spiritual, I can be frustrated. I could be running late for a concert. I could be lost, which I do all the time. I get lost with these maps. I even map quests. You know, you look at the map driving down the freeway. I get, I get lost all the time. I'm a double Gemini, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's four of us. It's like, you know, that, that in itself is like, you know, you got to find balance uniting all these four people, you know, into one. You know, it's like, so that, you know, I mean, so all of this human frailty that I go through in life, the Spirit knows me so well. I could be in a car, I could be throwing tantrums, I could be cussing at the Spirit, I could be crying, screaming. You know what? I'm completely authentic with the Spirit. I just am who I am. That's why the Spirit can trust me. It's like a relationship, right? When you know everything about that person and they're completely vulnerable, completely transparent, and they don't hold anything back, they just are who they are, okay? That is a relationship. That is an intimate relationship. And so this intimate relationship with the Spirit is something that, <clears throat> that I want to continue to, to maintain that closeness. And so I'm always going back to this intuition, okay? I'll always go back to it. And we really want to be able to soar to our highest dreams and to our highest aspirations in life, you know? We want to be able to find that balance. You know, in, in uh, Native American tradition, the eagle dance, the eagle dance is, is something that I, I practice that I've done since I was a child, just like hoop dancing. But it is something that really, it really uh, speaks to me. The thing I love about Native American culture is that there's so much symbolism. And children can understand it. When I used to go into the inner city in Phoenix, and when I used to teach classes in the inner city, anti-gang, anti-drug, you know, workshops, presentations, assemblies, and you know what? When I would talk about spirituality, I could just keep it so simple because children understand spirituality, don't they? And they'll call you on stuff if something is off, okay? They know, they don't complicate it. They don't write books and doctrines and dogmas and denominations. They just, they just know what spirituality is. You know, I knew, I had that kind of faith when I was a little boy that if I lost a tooth and if I put it under my pillow, I just knew, I knew, I knew when I woke up there was going to be a quarter underneath that pillow. You know that? Did you do that? And guess what? Every single time there was a quarter. Okay? Doesn't matter who put it there, I just knew it was going to be there. I did not question it. We want to still be the same way in our life today. We want to have that same simplicity in knowing, okay? So everything that we intend, everything, all of our intentions spiritually, we pray for something, we ask for something, we want to know that it's there, okay? We want to know that it's there, and we want to, we want to know that the Spirit is completely okay with our humanness and understands our humanness. The Spirit uses our senses to speak to us. How many of you had a loved one that passed on and you would be in the house and you would hear them call your name. You would hear them call your name. Okay? How many times have I walked through a house sometimes and I'll just 
see a shadow. I'll see a shadow. My senses. Okay? Or if I'm feeling something from the spirit and I'm and I'm and I'm I'm maybe talking about something that I'm really feeling strongly about, and maybe another person is there, and then you start feeling all those tinglys on your body and your hair raising, huh? That's the spirit speaking to your senses, touching you, okay? Touching your skin, touching your scalp, letting you know that there's a message. So all of these senses that we have, these five senses, are the, the vehicles that the spirit speaks to us. So it's wonderful as a Native American to be able to have, to be able to visually, to be able to see things, to, to be able to look at things and say, hey, oh, that makes sense. What does balance mean? It's like the eagle that's soaring effortlessly, balancing its wings effortlessly, see? Just very simply spreading its wings for an eagle to soar, for you to soar to your highest dreams. All it takes is opening a heart. That's the action, right? Opening your heart. You can't fly like this. <laughs> you can't fly like this, you don't get anywhere, okay? And you can't fly like this either. <laughs> okay, have you, ever seen, have you ever seen a sparrow? You know, going into a really strong, especially in California, all these strong winds, but you see a sparrow going into a really strong wind, and it's just going, it's just going. And it's not, and it's staying in the same place. That's what we do, we get tired and we fall down, we get burnt out. We flap and flap and flap, and we strive, and we try, and we manipulate whatever we need to do. You wanna simply go like this, open up your heart, and spread your wings. Let the spirit lift you so you can soar. The eagle only needs to flap five or six times an hour to get started, that's it. The rest of the time it's just going, here I go. Okay? It just catches the hot thermal of air. So we want to be able to have that balance that the eagle has, the left wing and the right wing. What do they represent? The left wing represents for me, represents the female side. The right wing represents the male side. When I say left wing and right wing, I'm not talking about politics. Okay? <laughs> There's just so much in the news and everything. Else. The left wing being the female side, the right wing the male side, this creates the balance, okay? The balance. Now, in the universe, what are the symbols, what are the pictures of the left wing and the right wing, the female and the male? The left wing, if you want to think about the moon, the moon is like that left wing. It's subtle, it's waiting, it's night energy, things slow down, it's contemplating, it's reflecting light from the sun. The right wing is much different, especially in Arizona. The sun is always hot. It's always bright. It's in your face. It's constant. It's assertive. It's obvious, isn't it? The right wing, the males, is that what you say about men? Obvious? <laughs> There's a few things that if you satisfy us, then we're completely happy, right? <laughs> So these two wings create this balance, see? So the eagle can soar. Now in our individual life, this left side, contemplating, reflecting, journaling, listening to your dreams, writing in your journal, yoga, Pilates, painting, taking a walk. The right wing is that assertiveness, taking care of business, being out there, Expressing yourself, fire, passion, being bold, being courageous. These two wings create this balance, okay? And so I'd like to share this balance with you in an eagle dance. So I'm going to do an eagle dance, and you will watch how the eagle is maintaining this balancing act of the wings, and how the, the wings are able to create this beautiful flight that you want in your own life to fly to your highest dreams and your highest aspirations. But there's a trick here. The eagle cannot soar until it leaves the nest. How many of us are in a nest <laughs> that is a comfort zone? The nest is a comfort zone. 
That eagle, when it's a young eagle, it's 80 feet in the air in a pine tree. It's completely safe, it's secure, it's out of all of the elements. It has no fear. It's simply, all it needs to do is And mom and dad come and drop food in its mouth. It's nourished, it's fed, it's warm. They put soft downy feather in the nest, make it a nice pillowy little mattress for it. Okay, it's got it made. Why does an eagle want to leave, huh? But that eagle starts to get hungry because mom and dad stopped feeding it at some point and they wanted to start venturing out and looking over the edge, even though it's 80 feet in the air in a pine tree, and you're going to drop into nothingness, mom and dad want to start egging it on. And they wanted to start thinking about leaving. So they stopped feeding it, making it hungry. So we come to this place in our nest of comfort zone, and we start getting hungry. We start starving in our soul. What used to nourish us, what used to feed us, in that relationship, in that career, in that lifestyle, in that behavior, no longer does. And it's not right or wrong, and it's not any judgment. We are constantly evolving, and guess what? We're going to keep leaving a nest over and over so that we can fly higher and higher and build a new nest. So we're not always going to be staying stagnant. The universe is in constant motion. So we want to be open to leaving that nest and jumping out of that nest and dropping into nothingness. And so this is going to be a flight of an eagle once it makes a decision to leave that nest and to begin soaring and flying to its highest dreams. This will be an eagle dance, and I'm going to be using a song off of my Soul Blessing CD to do this, which is more of a contemporary uh, type of a mix that I'm using. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this. Here we go.
to be able to flow without any fear. You know, unconditional love, if there is no judgment, there's no fear. There are no expectations. If you're not told that you're supposed to look like this, you're supposed to sound like that, you're supposed to dress like this, you're supposed to look like that movie star. If you're not expected then when you're not that person, you're not going to be judged. Judgment only brings fear. Before you're four years old, and you're a little boy and a little girl, before you're four years old, you're completely free, you're carefree, you're fun, you're creative, you're willing to take risks, you're vulnerable, you're open. By the time you're four years old, guess what? You've heard, no, no, no. Mom, can I do this? No. Can I try this? No. Can I wear this? No. 17,000 times, no. So we want to have this freedom to be able to just say yes to life. What I've learned in the hospice, my work in the hospice, is that I don't want to be laying there in that hospice bed regretting that I had not lived passionately and fully, that I have not fulfilled dreams in my life. That's why I'm taking yoga teacher training now. I'm taking salsa dance lessons. <laughs> because I am going for it. Okay? I'm not going to wait. Because what I would regret the most if I was laying in a hospital said that I did not try those things and I did not pursue those things when I had the energy, when I had the ability, and I just simply made excuses, okay? So we want to be able to step out passionately and go for life, okay? We want to be able to grab it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for six people to be like a child before you're four years old and to come up here and I'm going to have you share something with me. We're going to create something beautiful together. So I want six of you to come up right now. Don't think about it. Don't become fearful. Just come on up. Okay? I'm going to have you use a drum. You're going to create a heartbeat. Okay, so I'll have you set the audience. a drum, all these drums I've made, they're different skins, different animals, elk, buffalo, 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 deer, elk, elk, okay, 
so all different animals, all different souls live through the drum. When I make the drum on a full moon, usually I pull the bat, I pull the skin out of the bathtub, and I begin to stretch it on a full moon. I ask permission from that animal to live through this drum, to be used to sound its voice through this drum. And when I do that and I stretch the drum, if I know if the drum comes out, then I know I had permission to do it. Okay? If it doesn't, then I didn't. But these drums all have unique characteristics. Each animal in life, like just like each person in life and each species in life, has their own attributes and their own style and their own energy. And so that's what you have living through these drums. But what we're going to do right now is we are going to I want you to create a heartbeat group like this. That's our heartbeat. Okay. Okay. Yours. Okay. Yours. Okay. Okay. So now each of us have an individual heartbeat, our own unique stories, our own life our story that we have in this life, all of our experiences, our own energy, we're each unique. But now what we're going to do is we're going to unite all of our hearts together. And I want you to hear what it sounds like in the universe when the universe is in harmony and everything is pulsing together as one heartbeat, not a bunch of separate egos going different directions, but, but all of us coming together as one heartbeat of unconditional love, and I want you to feel, I want you to hear, I want you to sense what this is like in the universe, what it feels like when every rock, every leaf, every tree, every mountain, every star, every cloud, every star, every sun, the moon, everything is pulsing together, every person, every animal, every bird is pulsing together as one heartbeat of unconditional love. This is what it's going to sound like, this is what we're going to create, this energy right now in this room and it's going to have a ripple effect and it's going to go out into the world. So we're going to create a heartbeat. Ready? So we go. Good. This is what it sounds like. All different tones, all different lives, when they all become one, it creates a harmony of one heartbeat. That's what sound is. That's what harmony is. That's what you have instruments. You bring them together. They create a harmony, a completeness, a healing. So I want you to feel that if the universe was together like this, things would be much different. There would be no crime. There would be no judgment. There would be no separation. There would be no grief. There would be no war. No terrorism.
connect with each other. We don't have to know each other. We can unite our heartbeats together. We can try projects. We can endeavor to do things together. We can, we can come together and we can be able to create something of harmony. Everything that we touch can be that way. And so it's, it's wonderful to be able to actually, you actually saw it, okay? You saw how that was, that wasn't rehearsed, that wasn't practiced, that wasn't planned, that wasn't any expectations, okay? That's the way life can be. Free flowing, just flowing with life, flowing with the spirit. And I'd like to share a song with you. This is all off the Soul Blessing CD. And this song is uh, called Traveling Home. And uh, in this song, I'm bringing in some modern instrumentation, some other musicians coming in, guitar, keyboards, uh, different things coming in, bass, electric bass. So I'm bringing in different, different instruments, but these songs were created from a chant. Most of the songs were just created from a simple chant and then layered in that way. But there's seven different songs from the story of my life. That's why it's, why it's called Soul Blessings. And this song is called Traveling Home. And traveling home is about coming back home. Isn't that wonderful after you've been on a long journey or you've been on a long project and maybe you've been away traveling and taking care of business and you're just, you know that you're headed home, you know? And you know that your dog's waiting there or your cat or, or you have a loved one that's waiting for you or your family or just your home is waiting for you, you know? The yard and the way you've created your home and the setting and everything to be you. And you're coming home to that after a long journey, after traveling. And this is how this song is. It's about a warrior. It's like me coming home after a long journey. And I begin, you can hear the, you can hear the bells, you can hear the shakers at the beginning. Like a warrior, they're just hurrying home. You know, it's like, once you get home, it's been on a long expedition, it's been out hunting, has been out seeking, has been out searching. We've been trying to find ourselves for years. We've looked everywhere. We've tried to escape from ourselves. We can't be with ourselves. We've tried, we've tried everything else. We've tried to be everybody else. I spent many years as a drug addict, I know. I tried to, to get away from myself, okay? So we can spend many years on this path, looking and searching and seeking and running from ourselves. But it's wonderful when you are just heading home and you are just anxious to get home and you want to come home to yourself. When I looked in the mirror a number of years ago, and I had been going through 48 weeks of medical treatment, involved some chemotherapy, had a long leg, 48 weeks, and I didn't feel good. I felt sick, nauseous depressed, angry, road rage, suicidal. Just wanted to get under the covers and sleep all the time. That's all I wanted to do. I would go out, teach classes, do my whatever I, concerts I needed to do. As soon as I could, I would lay down. Wherever I was at, I would just lay down on the floor or whatever. But I didn't feel good. And you know what? During that time, I attempted to make a drum. This one right here. And I was laying on the floor, sitting on the floor. I was pulled the, the skin out of the bathtub. I was stretching it and I was wrestling with it. And I was trying and I couldn't quite get it right. It wasn't even. And you know what? I took that drum and I went <laughs> across, the, across, across the house. Okay? I talk about my human frailty. And I'm talking about the spirit knowing me inside and out. And I got so angry and so upset. And then I broke down and cried. And I leaned on the mirror. I leaned on the, on the sink in the bathroom. And I looked at myself in the mirror. I looked right into to my eyes in the mirror. And I was leaning on the sink. And I looked at myself and I said, Tony, I love you just the way you are, everything that has happened, your failures, the relationships you've been through, all the pain, 
all the disappointment, the feeling of sickness, everything else. I love you and I embrace everything about you. Your fears, your insecurities, everything. Okay? When I did that, there was just such a healing that happened inside of me. And I wanted to share that with you because this song, Traveling Home, is about that. It's about coming back home, looking yourself in the eyes, in the mirror of reality, everything that you are, without hiding one bit of it, and saying, I love you, just the way you are. So that's what this song is about. Traveling home is about actually coming home to yourself and being able to love yourself just the way you are. And so I'm going to share the song with you now. And... Uh, I have felt this way when I came to California, you know that? I felt like I came home. In my life right now, I feel like I am coming home. In a, in a way, everywhere that I'm going, it feels like home, okay? And so it's, it's really amazing what's happening. And uh, apparently, City of Petaluma thinks it's this my <laughs> So this is going to be called Traveling Home. And, uh, that's tradition and technology. <laughs> <laughs>